Hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation with a part two on uh, presenting uh, barometer signal, digital barometer signals in uh, OpenCPN. And uh, I'm going to use um, this, uh, I'm going to use two barometers we've made here, just mocked up here. But uh, the news is that I've, I'm involved, I've contacted or in touch with two commercial companies that are going to have very nice little packages like this available very shortly, maybe a couple weeks, inexpensive, that will have the, uh, the pressure for you uh, on a USB cable uh, like this. Uh, um, but in the meantime, and, and so watch this space, and I'll be announcing them and testing them as soon as they arrive. It'll be one for NEMA 183 and one for NEMA 2000. Both inexpensive, and, uh, and they look really nice, and uh, uh, should do the job, and we'll test them out here, and then I'll make an announcement. But for now, we got these ones we've cobbled together here. These are just two boards. Uh, these are about $20 each. You buy them just like they're looking here, two of these, and you plug this one on top of this one, and then put a cable in it. Then you have to, but then you have to put some software in it, but uh, it's all the instructions are there, but it's not really plug and play so much. So that's why it's nice to buy one where you just buy it, open up the box, and plug it in, and it all works. You get out the NEMA sentences you want. So we're dealing with NEMA sentences coming in the USB port that are going to be emulating a serial port. So let me back up and say whenever we're in fact every navigator these days modern navigator should have a program like uh, let me see if this is it right here cool term let me see okay cool term now I'm oh I'm gonna have to close uh, uh, yes I'm gonna have to close this down okay I have to close open CPN down because I can't connect to two things at once so I have this uh, signal going in here um, uh, so this, what this is, this program that you can get, it's a free program. It does not install. It's not invasive at all. It's just you put it, there's a folder you download. You put the folder on your hard drive, on your desktop or somewhere on your computer. And then you just open it up and run it. And there's a Mac version, a PC version that works identically. They both work same way, both free, both easy. I'll put a link to it in the uh, discussion. And then, um, then what you can do is read what's on your serial ports. And in navigation with electronics and your NEMA signals coming into all these different ports we've got and so forth, it's always very valuable to have a dependable way to look at those. Now, there is, there's other ways. OpenCPN has a way to look at the input and so forth. But this is a, sort of the raw input before it goes through the computer. I mean the navigation program, so it's handy to get cool term. So then you get to COM6, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see, which program am I here? Which barometer? One of them I've got at 4,800. I think this one, yeah, this one's at 4,800. Okay, BOD, and which is standard uh, GPS, uh, NEMA. Well, standard GPS, anyway. And so here's the signal coming in. Now, that uh, this sensor, this, this board, th there were two boards there. One board has the little computer chip, processor chip on it. The other one has the sensors. This one has an accelerometer and a magnetometer. So it can read um, uh, pitch and roll and yaw and heading and barometer. But right now, we're only going to look, we're mainly looking at barometer right here. So that's what the signal, that's what's going in. And it's a, and before I had a discussion of part one, this is a XDR signal. This is a XDR signal, and that's what's going in the computer. That's what's going, that's what we're working with. Okay, close. Don't save. Okay, now open CPN. I better do, where is it here? Oh, shoot. Uh, well, let me try this, see if that works. That may get me four. Oh, no, that did the right one. I thought I had an older version on this computer. Oh, look, it even still working. That's pretty good. Um, so that's that little boat. And here's the barometer. Now, if I turn it to the right. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm turning the little boat to the right. Turn the little boat to the left. Okay, like that. Lift up the nose. Go nose. Trim it up. Oh, and it trim it. 
uh, yeah, there you go. So you see, this is trim and so forth. Now that's laying flat. Okay, we don't care about this. I've just demoed those, these other sensors are available. and But there's the pressure. But now, let's go look through how you set this up. Because I've also done a trick here, and I want to show you how you do it. Suppose you lo know or you believe your sensor is off. These sensors out of the box, out of the box, will generally be within a couple millibars. Well, you know, it depends on what generation of sex uh, of instrument and how well the people put together their little board with it with it on and so forth. But generally within a couple millibars and and sometimes better. But but we want to do much better than two millibars. So uh, so I'm going to show you how you put in a correction once you know what's right. So where do we really best start? Okay, let's start here at the settings and then go to the connection. So I must be connected right. Okay, so here's serial port COM64, and we, and, and okay, so that's right. For, we got this all right here. Then I highlight that one, and let me come down here. And there's a borrow with that. So here I'm putting this. Now, again, this is explained in the first video, how you write this in. These are not these are not in the defaults. You have to manually put them in. That's explained in the first video. But right now, I'm, I'm putting both of them, although incoming is only one. And the whole issue we have here, remember what the issue is, that the, the, uh, this guy, this uh, dashboard over here, the dashboard will read XDR and MDA, but the plot, which has a lot higher resolution for the graphic plotting, only reads MDA. So what we have to do, and what we have coming in here, is only XDR, right? So, uh, so here's this. Now, um, show the debug window. That's this window here. And so here's this window. Now I'm going to pause it. So you see, here's what's happening. In comes this signal that we're just putting in from the sensors. Um, uh, XDR. And it's got the, the roll and the pitch and the barometer. But notice what this barometer here reads. This barometer is 1. Point, that's that's 1.01546, right? One point, so that's 1015.46 millibars. Now I've decided that this barometer is wrong. It's too low by 2.4 millibars. So I'm going to show you how I've corrected it. So now this, when I'm in the process of converting from XDR to MDA, we also shift in and make the correction to get the barometer reading right. So now it's coming out as an MDA sentence at 1017.5 whatever. It's 2.4 millibars higher. So that's the trick that we want to do. So that all looks okay. That looks okay. Apply. Okay. Now, so that's 1017. Oh, it's bouncing back and forth. Um, this, I've, I've had this happen before. It's, since it's reading both XDR and MDA, it's uh, going back and forth. But let me just see. Let's carry on here once. Maybe that'll fix itself. Let's go to the plugins. And, and the plugin we're going to use for this is NEMA Converter. That's a, uh, we've, I have a video somewhere on the use of NEMA Converter for simulating just Jeep, mo, uh, just using it as a, as a NEMA simulator. But uh, right now we're using it at the, in the intention in, in, for what it was made for. Namely, it was made to convert sentences. NEMA converter, convert them, and that's what we're doing. So I hit the preferences, and so this is the sentence I'm putting in here. This is the one that I've made, and so let me edit that. And uh, so. Let me back up here. Do I have this note here? Um, uh, I made a note. New document. Okay, so where am I? Down here. So here is the sentence going in that looks like this. Now, the way this NEMA converter works is you have to know each what each one of these positions is. So this sentence that looks like this coming in here with a borrow clear out at the end, this is actually the tenth location. You see, you got one, two, three, all the way out. Count those out. This is the tenth location in this particular signal, this particular XDR uh, 
signal. So then I may, the MDA signal then is supposed to, oh, I don't have it here. I would go back to the first video to see the structure of the MDA, full MDA signal. But so what I'm putting in for this now is I'm simu I've got, I'm skipping, uh, I'm skipping these first two, three terms of the MDA sentence. Um, I don't have, oh, I should have had that. Um, let me, I'm going to actually pause this and bring up a copy of that sentence. Um, okay, I found it. Here is a, uh, here's an MDA sentence, or at least the part we care about. Um, and all the, the number of commas, all this matters, so you have to count them. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make an associated article in our blog because in that article I can put things that you can cut and paste whereas I don't have that option very easily in the video uh, video description but anyway here is an MDA sentence it starts out with uh, the pressure in inches and then the letter I that means in inches so this is um, there is one comma two commas, three commas, and then there's the pressure, and then there is a B for, bar, uh, for it's in bars. So that's what that, that's what that unit is. Um, so uh, let me go back, where were we? Get rid of that. I think I can get, okay, I'm here. So here's the sentence, we got the three, the, the three commas, then I'm taking the sentence we're putting in, but I'm taking the tenth location. That's the actual pressure in bars. And then I just put in here, before this comma, I put in here plus, and remember these are bars, so it's a 0 0.000024 comma B. Now, uh, here's a note, and you, somewhere I read this in the, in the online discussion, I think, but it's definitely true. You cannot type this right here. If you try to type 0 0.0024, you try to type that in, it's going to crash. That's a, maybe a bug. I don't know what, but you can't do it. So you have to either, the way I've been doing is I write these up here like this. And I, I study them here and count the spaces and everything and get what I want. Then I paste it in here. But if you're going to write it directly here, you have to go and write zero. Just go ahead and type 0, 0, 0, 2, 4, comma, B, and then the commas. Then come back and put the cursor here and put a dot, put a period. But if you try to type zero period something, it crashes. A minor point. Once, you, uh, But it's good to know that, otherwise it's frustrating. Okay, and so that's what it's doing. So it's, it's coming out like that. So there now, that's the process. Then it's set, set, send one every second. That's unchecked. That doesn't matter now. That's okay. And so that's it, and that's okay. And that's okay. We're done. Well, we're done with that for now. Okay, so now we're... Um, uh, let's see. Oh, it stopped bouncing. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, so now we go to the plotter. Here's the plotter. No plots enabled. Right click. Five minutes. That's good. Configuration. These are all unchecked or you'll get a lot more plots than you want. Barometer. Now we click this one. Then we say OK. And there is the barometer. Okay, so that's all working now. So what this, okay, so that's that. So what that means is we've taken a barometer that has an input of, um, let's see if I can actually see it. Can we get the whole band going at once here? Connections, show filter. Okay. Yeah, so here it is, pause. So what we've got is we put in a signal. Oh, I've got some dummy here. Now, I would, I would pay attention to that. <laughs> I'm not sure if that dummy matters or doesn't matter. Uh, I, I think for the, I'm going to just say this works. Let's say, let's look at this and this works. I'll experiment later. We stopped it. It stopped flashing. That's, I mean, it, it, it's the, the uh, dashboard stopped reading both of them, and that's good. And I, I, don't, I can't imagine this makes any difference here. This is just skipped. It should be skipped. But anyway, 
here is uh, we're putting in an XDR signal, an XDR signal uh, with, a, with a barometer that needs to be corrected. Then we're correcting the barometer, converting it to MDA, and putting it out. Done and so forth. So that's that's what that looks like. And I think I'll stop there. I have another barometer. This actually is kind of a crude barometer I could put in. This is the third generation, uh, three generations ago, Bosch sensor. And the one that I have in another barometer here is a second generation Bosch. And it's a tremendous, it's much better much better and also the boards put together better and so forth so this will be almost smooth in this in this next one but I, that's not worth even showing you that but let me point out that these two new commercial products that we'll be able to demo and um, it's not it's not something we sell but we'll tell you where to buy them uh, after we test them out and so forth and I look forward to showing you that shortly but anyway that's the way you do it is a can be a little bit tedious but if you follow all those steps carefully then it works then you don't have to do any more this stuff will stay you can shut off everything turn it back on turn it you know back and forth and that's done and you've got your you've got then a barometer sensor going in there that you can read and have a real nice picture of your barometric pressure and watch it like you know um, like a, like a lot more expensive unit hello I just realized that I could do something with this barometer here to illustrate the point a little bit better about the value of this plot if I use the other barometer I could put it on a longer cord which I just did so this is sitting on the table at, at what are we reading here 1015.4 See if I move that over here. Yeah, this one, this barometer doesn't have the other two sensors in it. It's just a barometer 1015.5. So that's sitting flat on the table. Now I can go and, let's see, I'll put it down on the floor. And I go down the floor, the pressure should go up a little bit. Uh, and the rule on the pressure versus elevation Oh, look at that. So the scale, uh, the scale adjusts to, um, looks like it's putting about 0.4. Well, I guess it adjusts that. So anyway, the pressure went up a little bit because it's uh, down, uh, down on the floor. It's, it's been dropped about, oh, uh, let's see what that is. That's about 30 inches. It went down about 30 inches. And now I can pick it up and reach up as high as I can go. So that's maybe a, that's maybe five feet off the table where it was. So it goes up in the air. So um, so you see with a with a good barometer like this you can detect the very earliest signs that high pressures are are building on you, coming up on you, or some lows moving, you know, and, um, and, and so forth. So when you have a nice uh, trace of this, uh, like this going, and you have a, an accurate barometer, uh, then it becomes a valuable tool. So I'll put that back on the table now, and it should come back up. So that's a total of down about, uh, down about two feet and up about whatever. So there you go. That's what I just want to add to that, to the video.